Hello everyone, welcome to Chillopedia, this is Maxim. Today we will learn how to play in the seventh position. And in order to do that, we will continue working on the Zauer Klingenberg cello method and we will study the exercise number 212. In case you would like to have your own copy of this method, you can go to the description and find a link to download it. Also, I hope you will consider becoming a Cellopedia supporter. There is a Patreon link in the description. And if you become the patron of uh, Cellopedia, you will get an access to special perks, recordings of a uh, second cello part to play with and various sheet music with my addition with extra fingerings. It might seem to be very difficult to find this seventh position, but it is actually fairly easy because your first finger will be where the harmonic is. And on the A string, that will be A. I'm sure you are familiar with this harmonic, so prepare your left hand, check it against the harmonic. And then when you are ready, you just have to press all the way so the string is in a good contact with the fingerboard. I would encourage you not to use harmonic when you play this exercise, so you will have the solid sense of the seventh position. Let's try to play first two measures with the repeat sign, just using one note per bow, and I will play in tempo 60. The challenge here is to extend your second finger on the way up and then on the way down you have to move it back. You might also want to consider turning your wrist uh, a bit, so it is easy for you to reach C with the third finger. Your thumb can be touching uh, the A string or you can keep it slightly above the fingerboard. Either way will work. Now I will play it for you three notes per bowl. When you have to move to the lower strings, it will work the same way. With one exception, when you move to the D string, you have to slightly lift your elbow and then even higher elbow position when you play on G string and especially on the C string. So you have to adjust your elbow position when you are moving from A string to each of the lower strings. Let's try to play together the first line, three notes per bow in tempo, quarter note 60. to make a better sound when you play in the higher positions, you should remind yourself to check the spot which you use to put the bow on the string. It will have to be much closer to the bridge 
compared to when you play in the lower positions. We are not going to measure how close you have to be to the bridge, but definitely you will have to see quite a difference between normal spot you are using when you play in the lower positions and the spot which you will use when you play in the seventh position. In the next two measures, you will have to play C major scale. First, I will play it for you one note per bow. Make sure that you Pay attention to your thumb when you make a shift uh, from the 4th position to the 7th position. You have to start moving it a little bit in advance. And when you are in the 7th position, your thumb has to be above the fingerboard. That will be a mistake to try to keep it somewhere here. It will create extra tension and will definitely affect the precision of your left hand. Now I will play the same two measures for you with the bowings suggested by that sour. In the next two measures, we will have to play B flat major scale. Again, I will play it for you one note per bow. And once you get confident with all the shifts you have to make here, you might want to try it one measure per bowl. Next three measures will give you a chance to work on improving your left hand flexibility and dexterity. I will play it for you a bit slower in tempo quarter note 40 and I will play four notes per bow. And by the way, in the second measure of the third line, beginning of the second beat, I believe it has to be B, not G, to follow the same pattern. It is quite a challenging exercise. Just don't forget to pay attention what is your thumb is doing, that it is following other fingers. And also, uh, it uh, is always helpful to turn your wrist towards the third finger, so all extensions will be easier for you to make. And now we can try to play it in a faster tempo, quarter note 60, eight notes per bowl.
in the next two measures we will have to play F major arpeggio to learn it well since it has so many shifts we will play it in much slower tempo the 8th note 60. When you play in slower tempo, feel free to make shifts very clear. What I mean is that you can make shifts with a little bit of the slide, glissando, so you will hear very clearly when your left hand, when your target finger is reaching the uh, spot you would like to find. It might be especially helpful when you make a shift with the fourth finger on the G string from C to F. And you keep practicing and ultimately you will be able to play it in much faster tempo quarter note 60 and one measure per bow as printed. Of course you will have to pay a lot of attention to the left hand, but it would be great if after you get confident with the left hand if you can actually pay attention what is going on with the bow because when you switch from one string to another you will also have to adjust the bow angle and since there are so many string crossings if you forget about this if you forget about turning your bow at least a little bit according to which string you are playing, then you will hear problems with your sound. In the next measure, the beginning of the fourth line, we will have quite interesting exercise. There you have to play an A with the second finger and then right away make a shift and play the same note with the first finger. It is not very common technique, but it's good to be able to do that. Who knows when you will need it. But the more you learn, the more experience you will get. Have you noticed how I did it? I played the A with the second finger. And then I moved the bow to the same direction, but I made the shift. So we will have to hear a little bit of slide. You can just work on this separately. Just those two notes, two A's with different fingerings. In the next three measures, we will work on the shift to the seventh position. And it is quite difficult to learn well. So the best way to approach it is to make a slide when you are making a shift. And you do it like this.
make sure that you try to keep all fingers in the position. So you don't just uh, stretch your third finger without thinking about the position of other fingers. In this case, you will not use other fingers, but third one in the seventh position. But when you play music, you might as well have those other fingers ready. And then you need to try to make quicker shift. You will still hear a little bit of glissando, but this is the nature of making shifts on a string instrument. When you don't change the bow, you cannot hide a shift 100%. So a little bit of the slide will be audible. And again, that's a very reasonable way to play. the fingerboard, you might try to avoid looking. You might be tempted to put some kind of mark on the fingerboard or even sticker. I would strongly discourage you from doing it. It might seem to be like a good solution right away, but then you will be always in need of this kind of visual reference. And you cannot mark each note on cello fingerboard. It will not work for your technique. You will not be able to play well looking at the music. Also, people will notice that. So it will never make a good impression. And again, it will never work well for your technique. Just be patient. Give yourself time. If you miss the note one time after another, try to pay attention to the tendency. Uh, in case you always make a shift too far, try to remember about that and aim lower or opposite will happen if you don't make shift far enough, then remember about that and try to adjust your aim. And trust me, sooner than later, you will feel quite confident making those long shifts. And the last four measures are a bit of variation on uh, making a shift uh, and staying in the same position and moving to the lower string. I will play it for you one note per bow in tempo 8th note 60. <laughs> And finally, we can play those four measures faster. Quarter note 60 with original bowings, six notes per bow. I hope that after working on those exercises, you feel way more confident playing in the seventh position. And soon I will post the next video with more exercises for seventh position, but this time there will be more extensions. 
And don't forget to check out all information I posted in the description for this video. I hope you might be interested in learning more, enrolling in my Udemy courses, and maybe you even be able to support Chillopedia so I can spend more time working on new videos for you and other great students all over the world. Thank you for watching and see you soon.